A skilled prosthetist must recognize amputee gait deviations. A PTB prosthesis that is statically aligned properly may require additional adjustment when the amputee walks with it. This presentation will demonstrate six basic gait deviations you must correct in dynamic alignment of the PTB prosthesis. Normal human locomotion is a complex process. Unfortunately, we often discover its beauty only after it's taken away by disease or injury. Restoring locomotion for the amputee becomes a primary goal for the prosthetist. To accomplish correct dynamic alignment, you must observe the interaction of the socket, pylon, and foot at mid-stance as the amputee walks. Dynamic alignment must be accomplished by viewing locomotion from two different perspectives. First, you must observe the amputee walking away from you. And toward you, as you observe the interaction of socket, pylon, and foot. Make sure you talk with the amputee throughout the process of dynamic alignment. You will gain valuable information about excessive pressure and impressions from the amputee. This helps develop a cooperative and trusting relationship between you and the amputee. The second perspective you must use to complete the dynamic alignment is from the side angle. Again, observe the interaction of the socket, pylon, and foot. The first deviation we will demonstrate here is the pylon which is not vertical. As you observe this condition, note that the foot is not flat on the floor. This situation will create excessive socket pressure on either the proximal or the distal portion of the residual limb. As you can see, the pylon is not perpendicular to the ground, and the foot is not flat on the floor at mid-stance. This deviation can be caused by an improper tilt adjustment on the adjustable leg, the foot being too far outset, or the limb being too long. Of course, the pylon could tilt the opposite direction also to cause this deviation. A second deviation you may observe is excessive lateral thrust. If the lateral thrust is too great, the knee will be forced in a lateral direction. Watch the knee carefully, as we now demonstrate excessive lateral thrust. This situation can be caused by the foot being too far inset. It is also possible that the socket ML may be too large, causing the knee to be unstable. The amputee may report too much pressure on the medial side of the knee for excessive lateral thrust. The next deviation possible is excessive pistoning. In this case, the residual limb lifts out too far out of the socket as the amputee walks. Notice the pistoning action of the limb as the amputee walks. Of course, some pistoning will always occur but the residual limb should not lift out of the socket more than six millimeters, or one quarter of an inch, or the pistoning is excessive. This deviation is caused by an inadequate suspension system, or an improper fitting socket. You can only see this deviation from the rear view. The following gait deviation is the first of three you should observe from the side as the amputee walks. First, we look at excessive knee flexion at heel strike. Notice how the knee buckles and will not carry the amputee's weight in this situation. The knee kicks forward when this deviation is present. The amputee may say that the anterior distal tibia hurts. Observe the knee buckling as the amputee enters stance phase. This situation can be caused by too stiff a heel wedge, the foot position too far posterior, or too dorsiflexed, or the foot too tight in the shoe, hampering foot action. Another deviation observable from the side is drop-off in the last part of stance phase. 
the amputee may feel like they are falling in a hole. Notice how the knee falls rapidly forward as the amputee walks. This deviation can be caused by having the foot too far posterior or too dorsiflexed. Too short a keel on the satch foot will also cause this deviation. The final deviation we will observe here is excessive plantar flexion. The amputee may complain that it feels like walking uphill. Notice how the heel comes off the floor too soon and the knee is hard to flex. This deviation can be caused by a foot which is too far anterior, too much plantar flexion in the foot, or too soft a heel wedge. We have identified six basic gait deviations you must recognize and correct to improve the locomotion of the amputee. Through experience, you will identify other gait problems, some of which are caused by poor walking habits of amputees. As you observe the interaction of the socket, pylon, and foot during dynamic alignment, you will learn to improve amputee locomotion.